and my loves today I am getting into my spiritual journey and the likes so if you're curious about that or you just love a really good story then keep on watching I live now guided by God my heart my spirit and I don't do things for approval anymore or because my parents think I should or because society thinks that I should or um, you know to boost my ego I don't I don't do that anymore What's up guys, my name is Savannah. I teach modern hippies how to live a more healthy and natural lifestyle through mindfulness and science. Like I said before the intro, today I am getting into my spiritual journey and awakening. I'm also gonna be talking about my religious upbringing and the most important things that I learned or have learned thus far on my journey. I'm also gonna be talking about how I flip my life upside down and how drastically different my life is today than it was one day a year ago. Before we dive in, consider signing up for my free masterclass. It's all about transforming your anxious energy into manifestation power. If you have anxiety, it is perfect for you. It's free. Go sign up in the link down below. And be sure to stay tuned till the end of this video. I'm announcing something really exciting about the, you know, chakra singing bowls that I play. So stay tuned. Okay, so jumping right in, I've pretty much broken this up into three parts and that's um, my life growing up. So before I went to college and then my life from like college until the real stuff, the big awakening, the big where I flipped my life upside down and then everything after that, which is where I'm at right now, obviously. So my religious upbringing, I always knew that I wanted to be good. I wanted to be a good person and that I wanted to have a relationship with God or the divine or what was taught to me at the time as like, you know, being the man in the sky. I wanted to serve whatever was good. I wanted to serve the light. So I wanted to be a good person, but you know, what does that exactly mean? That definition can really be manipulated and the definition can be construed in a way to make people who want to fit into that category, who want to be good people, um, the definition can be, con you know, constructed in a way that benefits a particular cause, a particular re religion, a particular culture, and in what I was brought up in, which was fundamentalist Christianity, which are Christians that have a literal interpretation of the Bible. Um, a lot of them do think the earth is 10,000 years old. That meant following the Bible word for word, and everything outside of that was evil and bad, and if you didn't do what you were told to do, if you didn't um, follow the Christian path if you didn't um, accept Jesus into your heart, which as a concept, you know, I'll talk about that a bit later because um, I don't actually have a problem with that part. Um, if you didn't follow their religion, you would burn in hell forever. And um, we were taught that we are inherently evil, that our hearts are malicious, and that the only way to be good, to be a good person, was to follow whatever we were told whatever our pastor or um, Bible teachings told us. And like I said, everything outside of that was bad and evil and led to the fiery pits of hell. And looking back on that now, you know, everything that I believe now, all, all the things that I've learned since then and experienced, anything that you have to be fear-mongered into is not something of God. It's not something of the divine, of the universe, of source, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to use the word God in this um, video. I, whenever I say God, if that's uncomfortable for you, just substitute whatever you think of. God is love, and love is the opposite of fear, so it doesn't even fundamentally make sense that you could fearmonger someone into God, because fear and love are incompatible. They're not the same thing. They um, love is the absence of fear. So so I went to church every Sunday growing up. I went to a Christian school, very, very like staunchly Christian, and I grew up in a Christian household. So every aspect of my life was deep in the Kool-Aid. So when I turned 17 and I went to college, that was the first time in my life that I had been around people that weren't 
fundamentalist Christians that weren't staunchly, you know, Jesus is the only God and if you believe or follow anything else, you'll burn in hell forever. So <laughs> I met these people and I was like, wait a minute, they're, they're not evil. They're not bad. They're actually okay and I like them. Um, what? <laughs> I thought that everyone who wasn't Christian was lost and um, terrible and just wicked and evil, and they weren't. So there was a big um, confusion and cognitive dissonance in what I had always been taught and what I was firsthand experiencing. And I was still very young, I was only 17, I still like was a baby, didn't know what was going on. That kind of like opened my mind a little bit and opened the door to the possibility that maybe what I was taught growing up was wrong. And I didn't full out reject it right away, um, but I did allow myself to be drawn to things that I resonated with. And one of the first places that that was, it was something that I was taught was evil growing up was this mystic shop in my college town called Creative Energy. If you live in Melbourne, Florida, maybe you've heard of it. It's got crystals and all kinds of that like occultic, like witchy, evil type stuff that I was taught was always bad growing up. Um, but when I went into the store, the music and the scent and just the all around vibe and energy of it really resonated with me and was so interesting. You know, it was like I was walking into a totally different world completely. And I had always been taught stuff like meditation crystals um, was bad and evil and gonna like lead you down the path of wickedness and eventually to hell. So yeah, I found that store. I was really intrigued by it and I started to purchase books from there. That's actually what I would say was the beginning of my spiritual awakening, even though it was like when I was maybe like 18, 19 years old. Um, I didn't really, I'll get to it in a minute, but I didn't really have that big wake up mo moment until I was about 24, but I'll get there in a minute. It was very gradual. Spiritual awakenings and journeys are very gradual and then I feel like they come to a wall and you're like made to make that decision. So I'm gonna read off, I made a list of all the books that I read from ages 18 to about 21. Um, they have all shaped my life significantly in the things that I learned and the ways that they opened up my mind and started to blink open my third eye. Um, so they are Creating Sacred Space with Feng Shui, The Mastery of Love, The Four Agreements, Psychic Developments for Beginners, The Power of Now, Ego is the Enemy in Self-Observation. I'm linking them all down below if you want to check any of those out and uh, comment below your favorite spiritual book if you have one. What has changed your life the most? So yeah, I was reading these books. I was continuing to pursue that degree and my mind was starting to open. I even dated a Muslim guy, which was kind of like shocking for my family. But I did continue down this egoic path um, of the life that I had always been told by my upbringing in society that I had to have. You know, like life is some grocery list, tick, tick, tick. You have all these things and you'll be happy. And if you are someone like me who did achieve all of that and was like, wait a minute, like you know that that's not what makes you happy so i you know started i was reading these books i was dabbling in things like that nothing drastic um still going down that path society says we have to go down and i graduated college and i could not find a job i was in a relationship at the time which kept me in that college town because um, they still had a year to graduate and <sighs> There wasn't a lot in my field for in terms of work for that college town. So I couldn't find a job and I was just kind of like messing around and I was out drinking a lot. And um, I actually one night got into a car accident, drunk, three in the morning, I was not driving. Um, and this was a really significant event in my spiritual journey because I was unable to move for like a month or two and I had no income and for the first time in my life I was like dumped into the world you know I had graduated um, I got cut off from my parents financially and I was just kind of like lost right no longer really adhered to Christianity but I didn't really have anything else I just had all these books I had read so like I said couldn't move for a month broke and I decided that I would take my time and start a blog and that is where Blissful Bohemian was born my little baby 
So I did that for a couple months until I finally found a job, right? At this point, I'm 22 years old and I sunk into that life that I thought I needed to be happy. Like I said, I was kind of lost. I didn't really know. So I went with the generic, get a job, uh, get a nice car, get a nice apartment, have a long-term relationship, um, go out on the weekends, like spend money frivolously to make up for how miserable you are in your nine to five. And I did that for a while. I did that for a year and a half until the next significant event happened, which was that I got sick. Oh, and also during this time, right before I got sick, I learned that I was an empath because I was so bored and miserable in my engineering job that <laughs> I'm sorry if you're watching this right now, if you used to work with me, especially you, John. Um, you guys were amazing. It has nothing to do with you and everything to do with me. Um, so not ripping on the people there uh, for the most part. So I worked in a microelectronics lab, which I actually learned a lot about crystals in. Um, and we were able to listen like with AirPods to whatever we wanted as we worked. And I listened to thousands of spiritual um, videos on YouTube during that time where I even further deepened my understanding and knowledge on these topics. So I read all those books and here I am listening to all these videos. So I'm just gaining knowledge, gaining knowledge, gaining knowledge, which is actually when people say, how do you know so much about this stuff? It's like, because I have tens of thousands of hours of my life listening to stuff like this because it's what I was drawn to. It's what I was interested in. And I'm actually on the, um, autism spe spectrum so when I get interested in something I don't quit until I know absolutely everything and master it um, and you know how can you master the realm of spirituality so reading all those books listening to all those videos really my third eye started to open I started to awaken and see the world around me in a completely different way um, I still was in this job I was still continuing with blissful not really knowing what I'm doing I don't have a business marketing degree fumbling around with it trying to make something out of nothing, which is, if you've ever been an entrepreneur, you know how difficult that is. And still dreaming that one day I could, I don't know, make that my business. And I'm pretty introverted, so I always wanted to work from home. So yeah, I got sick. I went to my first, <laughs> first and last music festival and I caught mono from it. The form that I caught is chronic Epstein-Barr virus or EBV. And basically it made me have no energy for 18 months. In the beginning of it, I was so sick and lethargic and fatigued that I actually got two months off of work paid because I was so freaking sick. They paid me to sit at home for two months and just be sick. And right before I got sick, actually the long-term relationship that I was in moved 3,000 mile, miles away to the other side of the country. So I'm alone, I'm sick, I'm miserable. I'm trying to get better so I can go back to a job that I hate and my birthday happens, right? So this is another significant event. Um, I'm 24 years old that day, sitting at my birthday dinner, surrounded by loved friends. Um, my significant other is not there um, and I'm in and out of consciousness because I'm so freaking sick. And eventually I do get back to work um, and I get back into that routine of, you know, just going through the motions. So I'm back at work, I'm listening to those spiritual YouTube, um, different videos, different topics in my earbuds as I work, as I um, drink on the weekends a lot and try to escape how miserable I am at least for a couple hours a week and the next significant event happens, which is that my hair starts to fall out. So as you can see, I still have quite a bit of it, but I, and it's all like baby hairs, like growing back, it's kind of crazy looking right now. Um, but I lost about a fifth, about 20 to 25% of my hair, which is like, bye. So that was kind of like a Jonah moment for me. If you don't, Ironically, I'm like referencing the Bible here, um, which by the way, no problem with the Bible. I actually really like it. I think it's a great book full of lots of wisdom and stories and even a lot of truth. Um, but that was kind of like the divine God source, whatever, telling me like, girl, how are you not see, like, how are you not getting the messages? Like how drastic do I have to make this? How far do we, do I have to push you for you to finally go into the things that have been interesting you, the things that you're being called to, 
Like, do I literally have to make you like ugly? Do I literally, not that bald people are ugly, but do I literally have to strip you of like your ego, literally, you know, because if you have long hair, if you, um, especially if you're like a woman and you um, place a lot of your femininity in your hair, this can be like a giant part of your ego. And I didn't realize that actually. Um, how much of my identity was in my hair until it started to fall out. So my hair was falling out, I was miserable in my job, I was still freaking sick because I was sick for 18 months, including those first two months that were really, really bad. And I was just like, oh, okay, like my long-term relationship left me. And I actually talk about this next part in my free masterclass. Sign up below if you haven't already and you have anxiety. Um, I knew that I needed to change everything because of the way that my third eye had been open with all of this information that I had been intaking over the years, I could just see how stupid everything that I was doing was like, I like what was the point of me being miserable and ignoring my callings and passions and talents and being with somebody that more or less like left me, um, being sick, like, I feel very much that like being sick and my hair falling out was a sign that I needed to change and flip everything upside down and you know, I was miserable, so I did. And thus the next significant event where I dumped the person that I was with for four years, I quit my job, left my career as an engineer, decided to be a full-time entrepreneur with the business I had been slowly growing over the past three years. And I don't know, figure it out from there. Like, what, what, was, I do what was I doing? I don't know, but it felt right. So quick message, if you ever feel like there's something you need to do because it's just what you know you need to do, do it because what I'm about to tell you about where I am now, if I didn't take this leap of faith right here, I would never have been here. I would have been exactly where I was a year ago, probably still sick, probably like balding even, even more. So I quit my job, moved back home actually, which was really nice. I got to be with my teenage siblings a lot and struggled through figuring out entrepreneurialism. Like I said, I don't have a business or marketing degree, so I had to figure out how to run a business fully by myself uh, from scratch. During this time, as my business grew, I also grew. There was an incredible amount of inner work that was I was finally getting to after finally allowing myself to be free of what society tells us we have to be, of what my upbringing told me I had to be, and finally confronting my shadow and my ego and peeling off all of these layers to get to the real me, to the things that I always felt were there and that were pulled out by all of those books and videos I had read and listened to, and how to follow without expectation, how to know when something is a sign, how to trust the divine or God, and know when something is meant for you, know when to wait, know when to charge forward, and learn how to meditate, learn how to have a spiritual practice, how to be dedicated to it. There are so many things that I was learning in that year, which all ended with me moving to Denver, where I am now. My business is taking off, it's flourishing. I'm making sales in my sleep, which is something that I always dreamed about, but never thought would be possible for me. But it's a thing I've manifested it with the strength of the divine, with um, following where I'm being led. I met my twin flame. Uh, if you don't know where that is, I'll get to that in a minute. I have about an hour every day of spiritual practice every single day. I'm committed to that life. I'm moving into my calling as um, in, in energy healing and stuff like that. Um, I'm cultivating skills that I never thought I would ever learn about, run my business online on my own terms, and having to learn the discipline for that was another topic entirely, but I live now guided by God, my heart, my spirit, and I don't do things for approval anymore or because my parents think I should or because society thinks that I should or, um, you know, to boost my ego. I don't, I don't do that anymore because it doesn't serve me anymore and I love my life now. I love where I'm at mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically even. Um, I'm just in a really amazing place and it's all because of that 
you know, those milestones where I just kept going and kept moving towards what I was being drawn towards without letting fear hold me back. So here are the top things that I learned in my spiritual journey. That was just a brief overview. Like I can go into so much more detail and tell you to so many much more stories, but I don't want to bore you. So here are the things that I've learned. The first and foremost is that it's all just love. It's all about love and not fear. Every religion, their like golden rule is to treat other people as you would treat yourself. This is love, right? And I can go over these in depth in the comments or you can DM me on Instagram if you want to talk more about something here that maybe is calling to you that's resonating with you. I just want to put them out there really quick so we can, you know, move on with our lives. The second one is that separation is an illusion. We're all from the same and we will all return to the same. And the third one kind of branching off of that is that we are all souls. We all want the same thing. We all want purpose. We all want love. We all want to be accepted. We all want to be happy. We all want a sense of wonder. We all want something to work towards. We are all so much more alike than we are different. Um, because like I said, we come from the same and we return to the same. And the fourth thing, stemming more off of that, is that everyone else is just a mirror of you. So from the things that trigger you into anger to the way that you treat other people have nothing to do actually with what that person did to make you angry or um, what that person, what you think that person deserves and everything to do with you. They are just mirroring, mirroring to you what is already within you. The fifth is that it's hard to grow and confront your shadow and take those leaps of faith, but it's only as hard as you make it because when you know and feel like in your core that something is meant for you, um, the only real thing to do is go for it. And you can make that as hard or as easy as you want to. The only reason that it, you believe it's hard is because of your attachment to the idea that it is hard. M number six is that God, the universe, source, uh, the divine, Mother Gaia, what, whatever you wanna call it, whatever it means to you, is bigger than any one religion. Religion is a great tool, but religion is somebody else's experience of spirituality. Spirituality is all about your experience and your relationship with God. Number seven is that there is so much more going on here in just just our earthly plane. I'm not even gonna get into other things. Um, then we, that we, there's so much more going on than we can sense with our five human senses. Period. Like for example, um, there's UV rays. I can't see them, but they're still gonna give me a sunburn. Number eight is that you should always try to cultivate and follow your spirit more than your ego. How do you know when you're being in your ego, when you're living your ego? It's because you are being guided by fear rather than love. Love is a fruit of the spirit. So in all things, choose love. Um, real quick, <laughs> shameless plug. Um, number nine is to not judge yourself or judge others. Discernment is different. Discernment is something, a skill that you definitely need, an analytical skill to make decisions. Judgment is when you um, hold someone to a standard that you have like made up or someone else has made up and compare them and you know say if they're good or bad. You judge them as good or bad. Don't judge yourself, don't judge others because we're just here learning. That's just, that's all we're doing here. We're learning. Earth is, in, Earth is like a school. And number 10, arguably one of the most important parts, especially if you are like a teenager right now and you're here from TikTok and you're listening to me, this crazy person, rant. Do the thing that's in your heart. Whatever it is. I don't care if it's like bicycling. If like bicycling is your passion. If it's a thing that just makes you want to wake up in the morning and, and live. If it's... Um, underwater basket weaving, if it's art, if it's um, science, if whatever it is, don't listen to society. If you follow this path like I did, you're just gonna be miserable and you'll eventually hit that wall where either you, you succumb to misery um, or you do the thing that you know all along you needed to do. Listen to that thing in your heart that is your interest, your talent, your passion. It is not random. It was placed there for a reason. Follow it no matter the cost and it will not lead you astray, I promise. 
So next week we're talking about soulmates or twin flames, which I mentioned earlier. If you don't know what that is, it's a really exciting topic. I really want to touch on these things in the least ego driven way because in truth, there is no separation. Um, but I want to talk about these specific, these specifically discerned soul ties and connections. And um, yeah, like I said, of course, we're all connected and we'll keep that in mind as we deep dive into the topic. But if you're interested in soulmates and twin flames and karmic relationships and the likes, then definitely subscribe so you don't miss that next week. And also the announcement that I wanted to make about the chakra bowls, I'm going to be uploading starting uh, someday in the next few days. Um, I'll let you guys know. I'm going to be uploading an overnight elongated video of each of the chakra bowls for you to listen while to while you sleep and there'll be something to be gained by each bowl as you listen to it overnight it'll be a quick energetic tune-up and you can do each of the chakras in as you sleep within a week so subscribe so you don't miss that it's gonna be awesome don't forget to give this video a like and if you want to learn more about how to live a more holistically healthy lifestyle then start by watching one of these two videos right here. Thank you so much for watching me open up today. I hope that you gained something from that. Leave me a comment below what you thought, if you have anything that resonated with you, and I will see you in the next one. Have a blissful day.